Recording is on. So Jesse and I were just talking about some changes to the Plenty CMS. So we were doing some media browser stuff and I had been fetching some files from a URL, which doesn't really work on a lot of servers. So Jesse has rewritten a lot of this um, to basically create an index of files. So on the build process, uh, Plenty in, in the Go engine, we'll actually look at what files we have and it'll create basically JSON for each one of those files that we can then read into our front end app, which is built in Svelte. Yeah. And, uh, one JSON for all, all the files, actually. Oh, perfect. Um, and then you, it looked like uh, I saw in the PR that you, you did on GitHub that you said that you reworked some filters and things. That's great. Um, so yeah, Jesse, do you want to share your screen and we can take a look at what you've done and maybe look dive into some of the code if we have some time? Yeah, sure. Cool. Uh, here we go. Cool. Did I change something? No. Yeah. Any chance you could bump up the size a little bit, Jesse? Yeah. Sure. Great. Thank you. That's good, no? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Thanks. Um, so I made, uh, previously I made the asset index in the pull step. Mm -hmm. this ha I have shown, shown you this, like, yeah, previously or before that. Yep, great. And that happens in the asset copy part. Okay, that's great. Um, that makes sense. So yep. just for, for the viewers, um, so basically we copy assets over from you know your your base project. There's an assets folder, and then we copy that over to the actual build output. And so during this process, Jesse's actually going through and finding those file paths and then creating that yep. um, that JSON file. Or that file path has been found, but I'm just appending them to an array and or array like and mm -hmm. then Writing at the, well, writing the JSON to the um, public folder. Perfect. Yep, it makes a lot of sense. But now what I did is using this JSON. Mm -hmm. uh, I modified the get assets file mm -hmm. so that actually rewrote it completely. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought you were going to even de just delete that file entirely, but that's, that's, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's not very useful file. It's just fetch. Yeah, but, exactly. Yeah. Um, but at least it, it's like, like standardized where, how, how it's fetched. Mm -hmm. Um, so it gets the, just gets the index file. Uh huh. That's all it does. Great. Uh, and it contains an array of paths. I can actually show how it's like. Sure. Um, for a reminder, it's assets index JSON. Mm -hmm. So th these are the compiled outputs. Yes, that makes sense. And, and we talked about. We talked about this a little bit on chat yeah. before, right, Jesse? So basically, so this is a compiled asset, right? This is not something that's tracked with Git that right. lives in your project. Um, and it's not something that Plenty CMS actually has to write back to. So this is, it's yeah. going to look to whatever's in your assets file. So the CMS will manage whatever's in that, sorry, the assets folder, the CMS will manage what's in that. And then this will get generated every time based on those contents, right? It just exposed, it exposes the like paths to the client, client mm -hmm. side. Perfect. That's all it does. Great. And then I modified the media browser. Mm -hmm. I can actually show that if oh, yeah. a lot of it. Yeah. So actually, let's just see, see the file. Sure. Because there's so many changes. Mm -hmm. um, there's the get assets. I, I've just really written most of it because it was easier. OK. It, this is async, asynchronous function load index that's awaited the template mm -hmm. that populates assets, filters, uh, variables. Uh -huh. um, it gets the folder, which are the filter keywords, basically, okay. and pushes them to the filter array. Nice. And then forces update to that variable or yep. anything that's using that variable because in Svelte push doesn't yeah exactly yeah 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 exactly yeah they sometimes they you can do it in like 
like filters equals like a destructured array uh, and then you can like add yeah. it yeah yeah there's a I bunch of different ways to do it you done that in the previous version yeah exactly um, yeah but there's a, I, I i do i use this all the time like the <laughs> you'll do it and then you just kind of like step the thing equal to itself just to make sure the ui updates i mean people yeah. who are familiar with svelte probably are used to seeing that but other people might find it funny <laughs> yeah um and there's the filter toggle ui stuff toggles yeah. and clears and here's the actual filtering of mm -hmm. the assets so if there's no enabled filters it just uh doesn't filter anything mm -hmm. and if there is enabled assets it first first it splits all the segments of the URL mm -hmm. of the asset path. Yep. And then remove first and last of last segment. So first is the assets folder and last is the file name. Okay. Those aren't filters, so we don't use them. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. So if some folder is in the enabled filters array, mm -hmm. then we show the asset. Okay. Yep, that makes sense. And then we just append the base URL to the asset asset path, so it can be used in the HTML. Yep, yep. And so for people who aren't familiar, the base URL is a a contract that allows you to. It actually uses HTML base URL, so you can surf things off of like a subfolder if if needed. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a subfolder, then it'll just be blank. Um, so that's something yeah. you're getting from the environment. The base URL is actually constructed in the <laughs> get. Assets. Oh, it is. Oh, okay. Oh, interesting. The, okay. The file. That's because <laughs> I use regex. Uh huh. And, gotcha. Uh, Svelte files doesn't work with regex in plenty. Oh, okay. Yep. At, at least this regex didn't work. Yes, that, that you have to. Yeah, and I, I that's another one of those things, kind of like the template string. So you can <clears> do that. You can do a new regex um, declaration, and it will yeah. work. But it, it doesn't work with the forward slashes. Um, yeah. That's that's definitely something I've noticed as well. It's kind of a pain. Mm. It somehow like get rid of this escape yeah escape character yeah yeah um yeah. okay well so there's also so there is um so sorry so you're getting the base url from the environment file and then you're you're regexing um to do what here now it's base url without trailing sauce so oh okay if if there's trailing sauce i don't know if there is yeah. Yep. A lot of people probably would put a trailing slash, so that makes sense. Yeah. Like, like if it's just a, yeah, it, there could be or it could be not. It's hard to form URLs if we don't know if there's trailing slash. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. You have to account for a lot of different yeah. situations, so that makes sense. And that's about it. It awaits the load index, mm -hmm. and then there's. Everything else is pretty much the same, except yep. this gets the filter assets from a variable instead of function. Ah, okay. Because it's update, like updating variable. Uh huh. Like reactive variable. Reactive yep. variable yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Cool. This looks good, and I I assume that like. There's probably, I mean, a lot of things here, I, I think, are performance boosts. So first of all, using the, the index rather than fetching all those yeah. those links recursively, that's probably a huge performance boost right there alone because um, you're, you're offloading a lot of that work to the Go server at build time, which is very fast versus having to do it in the browser at runtime. Um, and also, like, it, more robust, obviously. Like, it wasn't going to work either way, whether it's more performant or not. We, we couldn't. We couldn't continue fetching just the URLs like we we're doing. It just wasn't going to work across servers. So, um, yeah, this is great. I could demo how it's how it works. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Uh, it's actually running already. But okay. So I just showed the page. Yep. Here's the library. Great cat pick. I love it. Yeah. It it actually loads so fast you can't even read the loading. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. That's awesome. It, that's at least in local environment. Yeah. Yep. I really love that you're keeping it's, with the cats theme. Perfect. <laughs> it's actually, it's font as an icon I used, I used as a logo for like in like my personal project management system. Oh, nice. Nice. It comes, <laughs> comes from font awesome. Is that what you said? What? 
Did you say it came from Font Awesome or, or no? Font Awesome. Font yeah, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Cool. It's Font Awesome marketing. Yeah. 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 That's great. Um, cool. And, and so I'm curious what happens. Like, and I was thinking about this, and this maybe is not thought about yet, but like, so nested folders, you, you had mentioned, you know, yeah. some of the challenges with nested folders yeah. last time. Can, um, so, can can you uh, spark my memory of of some of the critiques you had with with nested folders, like not knowing you know what level they're at? Um, yeah, so like I was thinking, if there's sub like for example subfolders mm -hmm. that have the same name, yep, um, other subfolder, or for example, yeah, like if mm, what what could be the I could demonstrate it. I, I hear what you're saying. So there could be cats and there could be dogs, and each one of those could have tests within it or something like that. For example, there's, there could be animals. Mm -hmm. There could be cats, but there's also cats in the top level. Yeah, exactly. So, so yeah. I don't know if it affects anything. Yeah. Probably not. Yeah. It will keep. So At if you. Double, double filters. So. Yeah. If you reload your thing now, um, um, I would just oh. copy the cat here because it doesn't. Like, oh, yeah, it needs an actual file. If it's empty. Uh -huh. That makes sense. Well, that's that's also good. I think that that removes some need for. I was accounting for things that just I guess probably don't need to be accounted for. So yeah. Uh -huh. Aha. <laughs> so so it gets them both. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, thing, yeah. Yep. So yeah, I'm. So I wonder if at some point, and again, this is not super, what you've done here is, is great. Um, at some point, I wonder if maybe we want to think through like only showing subfolders when the top level is enabled or something like that. I, I don't know um, if that's important. Mm -hmm. The other thing I was thinking, um, so we're kind of exploding the paths, right? So there could yeah. be that situation where if we're, we're exploding the path and then I don't know if you're, you're reusing what I had there before where we're basically yeah. saying like, is this subfolder in the path? So you potentially could be filtering on a folder and then another path could have that name in it. Like for instance, you could have a, a folder called test and then you could, you could have another folder called my test. And I don't know if we're checking if those strings match exactly, if they're just including them, but maybe we have to think through that too. So I, I guess, it's, I oh. guess if we're doing like an includes and we're doing it, uh, looking for an array, then it wouldn't match a substring. It would have to match the full string, right? Yeah. Okay. It's so that should be fine, I guess. Yeah, it's an exact match. match. But mm -hmm. I, I can think of a situation where you would like to use like cats filter to get also the crazy cats or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's something we'll have to think probably through. Keep that ticking in your head. Subfolder, then, probably. Yeah. Yeah. And if it's in a folder that includes the keyword, like any of the folders in the tree include the keyword, then it gets shown. Mm -hmm. so, mm. so, so we'll say, like, no matter where this folder's nested, if it's in a cat's folder, then we'll show it. Yeah. Yeah. That might be a good compromise. And then that way, and so if we have duplicate, we could also probably check for duplicate filters, right? Because there's, there's no sense in showing two two cat folders that both highlight, yeah. right? We could just filter out one of those. Yeah, um, that's, that's, that's what I th th think that we could fix. fix. Yeah. That's, way, that way, that's the way. Yeah, I think that's yeah. pretty reasonable. I think that's pretty reasonable. Um, yeah, I mean, there's this, again, this is splitting hairs. Like I'm not super concerned about this. We have a lot of quirks. Mm -hmm. Um, right, like right now in our component, um, architecture, like on the edit side of things, like if you duplicate components that gives all sorts of challenges for moving and editing those because of the way that, um, keyed each blocks work in Svelte. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but basically if you're trying to do, uh, animations and transitions, you need to essentially know which block or sorry, which element is which element. And, uh, if Svelte doesn't know that, then basically it tries to replace elements versus keeping track of the same element and then using those to like, you know, do like switch animations. So the way we're doing that is kind of interesting. And I know this is a little off topic, but essentially um, it, once you start editing, if you have these removable components on a page um, 
it, it uses the, the content as the key while you are moving them because, uh, you know, positional keys wouldn't work in that case. And then as you're editing them, it uses the position, it switches to the positional keys. Um, but it's a challenge if you actually try to, uh, add the same component twice because, uh, you know, uh, it, it gets the key that is the same value and then it can't, it doesn't know what to do. So you can no longer move them in a meaningful way. So again, there's a lot of these little quirks that we're gonna have to think through. Um, Ideally, you know, this is sure. a bug that won't be hitting everybody. Hopefully you're not adding the same component a bunch of times to your page, but you know, there are definitely situations where I could see somebody wanting to do that. So, um, is that like in the editor? Is yeah. And exactly in the editor. Yeah. Um, so cause, you know, like a, like an array list of things. Yep. If you change the order, then yeah. So, yeah. so basically ar arrays are automatically getting converted into um, this kind of component thing that you can like, you can change the order, you can delete, you can remove them and then you can edit them, right? Like has like a, an expandable accordion. Um, yep. And basically what happens is if you have the same value in there, the values are used as a key for moving events because the, the position is not, um, is not fixed. Uh, you know, the, the position of the rays actually changed. Um, and then, you know, the other way to do it is like you insert like define keys ahead of time. But, uh, you know, for now I, I didn't want to do that. And especially because of the data structure is kind of flexible and all over the place. It makes that really challenging, but it so also makes it, yeah. So yeah. we'll have to think through that at some point, just because yeah. you can't duplicate components. But you know, for now, for now it works in most cases, um, and that's all we can hope for. <laughs> awesome, Jesse. This looks great. I, I'm gonna merge in that pull request that you put in. Um, thanks for for all the work. I think this is a huge improvement from where we were before. Uh, before I stop the recording, is there anything else that you want to talk about, like? Um, kind of next steps or thoughts or questions about anything? Yeah, probably. What's the next like step? That's that's like most most important. Or yeah, yeah. Step. Well, I think there's a couple a couple of things that we could do. Um, and the actions. Asset actions. Sorry, what is that? Asset actions like delete and replace. It Exactly. Actually. So that, so that was one of them I was thinking. Um, so yeah, like being able to actually remove from the file browser um, and then also just being able to select a few and then download those together. So um, I think that would be a good step. Another thing that we need to think about is just the creation of new files and what that looks like. So, uh, you know, how do we, you, you know, when you, you, you click the add button in the menu, the main admin menu, it should give you a way to basically define a file, um, but that file should know where it lives, right? So for instance, if you say add, and then you should get a select list of basically which type content type you're adding. So maybe we have a content type called blogs. So you say add blogs, and then that knows that it's in the content blogs folder already. So all you have to do at that point is define a file name. So you say like post1.json or whatever. And then from there, it should you should get some default content. So we want the JSON to have some kind of default structure that you would then fill out, right? So that's where yeah. it would probably look to something like blueprint.json or something like that, where it's just a, a dummy content. So it'd be like, you know, a key title, and then it'd be like test title for the value. And then it would say, you know, key date, and then it'd be like a test date value. So those type of things we have to um, have to have accommodated, but that would be a, that would be a good next step at some point too. But I think for now, maybe wrapping up the media stuff, like you said, with the, the remove actions, download actions, that'd be good to do. I can think through some UI things on that. I, I'm probably going to convert this whole thing into a pop-up at some point. Um, but again, getting the mechanics down is important. So if you have capacity and you want to take a look at, you know, the removing of files um, and that type of thing, yeah. then that'd be awesome. I could try to <laughs> take a look at them. Cool. Awesome. Uh, anything else for the recording, Jesse? No, not actually. Okay, cool. I'll turn it off.